1977 was a pretty darn good year if you're a fan of science fiction. You see, a little film you may remember called Star Wars hit movie theaters hard in May of that year, and because of that movie's success, TV networks were eager to entice viewers with a slice of their own sci-fi pie when the fall season debuted. One of the shows that I instantly fell in love with was Logan's Run, starring Gregory Harrison, Heather Menzies, and Donald Moffat. Wait, these aren't those actors. That's because it was based on a movie that debuted a year earlier in 1976 to modest success. Although I wanted to see it, I hadn't been able to see that movie mainly because no one else in my family wanted to go. So I had to satisfy my curiosity about the show in other ways. First there was the comic book version. Thank you Marvel, thank you very much. From there I migrated to the actual novel that the movie was based on. As with most books that are translated to film, the novel contained a much larger world with a vastly expanded story. So let's get back to the TV series. The first episode was kind of like a mini version of the film, although there were some major differences in the plot. Logan's friend and fellow Sandman Francis, well, he pursues Logan and Jessica in the movie because of a sense of duty as well as a feeling of being betrayed by Logan. In the TV show, however, Francis becomes corrupt with the idea that he might be able to live beyond the age of 30 if he is able to capture Logan and Jessica so that they can be reprogrammed. Additionally, a new character, an android named Rem, played by Donald Moffat, is introduced. Kind of felt like Rem was added to take advantage of the popularity of Star Wars prim and proper protocol droid C-3PO. And at first, at least to a 13-year-old kid, it seemed like Logan's run was going to be a bigger hit on TV than it was on the silver screen. Everywhere I turned, it seemed like I was running across a magazine with the show on its cover. Even Dynamite Magazine had Logan's run on its cover. A sure sign of a show's popularity. And it absolutely did not hurt. The show had a true beauty in it. Heather Menzies, yep, you're right, she's one of the kids from The Sound of Music. Anyway, Heather was amazing on this show. More specifically, regardless of what sort of peril that she, Logan, and Rem might be facing, her hair was amazing. It never seemed to even get messed up in the slightest. Not a single strand out of place. And there were plenty of amazing adventures during the show's one and only season. In fact, saying that the show had a full season is, well, it's incorrect. Although 14 episodes were in the can, only 11 were ever broadcast by CBS before they made the decision to pull the plug. All 14 episodes are available, however, to watch now. You can stream them on Amazon or purchase the complete series on DVD, at least until it goes out of print. I've put links in the video description if you're interested in going back and watching some classic sci-fi. And I know there are critics out there that will say, classic sci-fi? Okay, I will concede it wasn't the greatest show ever made. But it did have some pretty talented people involved. In fact, all three of the folks pictured above, David Gerald, DC Fontana, and Harlan Ellison, were involved in Star Trek. And then later on, Gerald and Fontana were heavily involved in another favorite of mine, the Saturday morning classic, Land of the Lost. Anyway, talented people for sure. As you might expect with these kind of folks involved, there were some pretty darn interesting ideas that were conveyed over the relatively short lifespan of this show. It's just too darn bad that, just like networks today, CBS didn't have enough faith in this show to give it the time necessary to hit its stride. Some things never change. So that's it. Do you remember Logan's Run? The TV show or the movie? And if so, what did you think? Did you prefer one over the other? Let me know in the comments section below and while you're at it, please click on the thumbs up icon and why not consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.